Chapter 23 On the football field, I don't run around people. I run through them. Life is football. For a couple of minutes there, I had forgotten. And then I remembered. I was the holder of the single-game touchdown record for Springfield Middle School. I was five foot seven and a half, 154 pounds. I was wearing a 10-pizza shirt. I was Crash Coogan. No more messing around. No more cruising by with a dinky little wave and hoping she would smile at me. I walked right up to her like those girlfriends of hers weren't there, like nothing was there but those big brown eyes of hers, getting bigger and bigger, like the eyes of a free safety just before I plow him under. Hi, Jane, I said. How you doing? I thought you might come to the dance. Is that a new hairdo? One hand started up like it was going to touch her hair, then stopped. Her face didn't know what to do either. It was like, gah. She was totally off guard. The crasher was in charge. The crasher loved it. Not really, she said at last. No, I said, rolling now, smiling, shedding tacklers. Well, it looks different. Anyway, it looks real nice. She was ready to say thank you, but I just rolled on. Tell you one thing that is new. I patted my chest. This shirt. Got it at Jackman's. Maybe you don't know because you're new here, but that's a men's store. I can wear men's sizes. I gave her a wink. I guess you could wear women's sizes, huh? Those big browns were looking up at the crash man. Before she could grin and say, you better believe it, I went on. I hope you like all those TDs I'm scoring. Tell you what, next game, my first TD will be just for you, okay? I was remembering how the big-time jocks in high school and college get all the girls they want, and I was thinking, hey, it's true. And I wanted to say, I really like how you hardly use any makeup, but I didn't know how to say it, at least with words. But my hand knew how to do it. My hand was reaching out to say it, to touch that perfect, unmade-up face the most beautiful face I ever saw. My fingertips never reached her cheek. She slapped them away. It didn't make sense, so I ignored it. I smiled bigger than ever and took her hand and started towing her away. Hey, let's dance, okay? She jerked her hand out of mine, and for the second time in five minutes I heard that word. No! I said... Huh? She jabbed her hands into her hips. She glared. Who do you think you are? I grinned. I don't know if I got the words from a movie or what, but they were there. I'm the answer to your dreams, baby. Stone cold silence. Frozen face. For the first time ever, she was looking at me, really looking. And then she laughed. Not giggled, laughed. Her friends laughed. They kept on laughing. Jane had her hand over her mouth. Another had tears. Another was doubled over, cramping up. I knew they were laughing at me. But if they thought I cared, they didn't know me. Crash Coogan never, got it, never gives up. So I just cranked up a chuckle of my own, reached out and took her hand again and headed back out to the dance floor. This time when she tried to yank herself free, she couldn't. The grip of iron had her. And then she kicked me, right above my heel in my Achilles tendon. My leg buckled. I let go of her. I turned. I was about ready to stop being nice. Hey, I said, what are you trying to do? You know what you just did? I didn't wait for an answer. You just kicked my Achilles tendon. Do you know that's about the worst thing you can do to a running back? If you snap your Achilles, you're out for a year, minimum, maybe two years. And even after that, you might never be the same. I glared at her, letting it sink in. Girls, even cheerleaders, don't know anything about football. 
They couldn't care less about what it takes to be a pro. She finally said something. You... Her lips curled, showing her teeth. Hey, don't do that, I warned her. It ruins your looks. Her lip went higher. If you ever touch me again, I'm going to scream and get you kicked out of school. You ever kick my Achilles again and you won't have any mouth to scream with, I told her. She looked like she was going to laugh again, but she just gave an unladylike snort and wagged her head. You are the biggest jerk I ever met in my life. Thank you, I said pleasantly. She went rambling on. You think you're so great, I bowed. Thank you, but you're just pathetic. You have a big mouth. You bully people around. You don't care about anybody's feelings. You're just a big, dumb, obnoxious jockstrap. I didn't really care about the words. What I cared about was that finally, Jane Forbes was standing still and facing me and talking to me. I think I was about to reach out and take her hand for a third time when who shows up but Spider Webb.